Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. This is almost a viewer request video. A few videos ago in the comments section, Colin had asked me if I had any uh, special tips or tricks uh, for dealing with surface tension. In his particular case, he had some oil on the surface and some bubbles, and I had answered in the comment section, and then I thought about it, and then I had answered it again, and the more I thought about it, uh, the more things I remember using. Uh, I don't do a lot of this now, Mostly because a lot of my tanks, uh, like the client tanks, are drilled, and I have other methods now for taking care of that sort of stuff. And here in the fish room, as you can see, all my tanks are uh, drilled and have overflows, so by simply adding water to the tank, uh, I don't normally use a container like this. Usually I just uh, take the spigot and hose and I'll fill that tank uh, about three quarters of an inch, inch above uh, the overflow, and then it would all just flow down. But I was trying to capture this on the camera, and I don't think I quite got it right. Uh, it's kind of difficult to get to see that sort of thing going down the drain, uh, but it is the method I use mostly. Uh, one of the other things I do uh, for the fish room, is, well actually not just for the fish room, also for uh, clients in general, is I break up the surface. One of the easiest ways of doing that, of course, is to simply uh, bubble some water in the tank. Now you don't have to do it at this level, I mean any kind of surface turnover is fine and then what happens is whatever is caught at that interface between water and air will get churned up and then of course uh, taken into the filtration system and then dealt with and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. And in this particular case what I would do also is I would add a little bit of water to that tank and then all those bubbles uh, would end up convincing most of it to go down the drain and again of course that's how I deal with most of it here in the fish room. Now you don't need to use air. Uh, you can use a power head, you can use the spray bar from a canister filter, you can, uh, well, there's just so many ways, the overflow from a hob. Any of those things are perfectly fine for dealing with that sort of stuff. Now, I don't really get a lot of surface tension uh, in my tanks, especially these established ones like this, but I do get it in new aquarium setting up. And fortunately, as I was thinking about this, uh, the three new tanks, uh, the ones I'm doing for the plant growth experiment, they are at that point where that sort of stuff does show up a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to use them as guinea pigs, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the ways I used to do this uh, like years and years ago. And it doesn't require any special equipment, as you can see. Uh, this is just, uh, well, this is a sour cream container. And any kind of small yogurt container, that sort of stuff, or any plastic container for that matter, uh, just dip it below the surface. Uh, use two hands because <laughs> this is a little more difficult with one. Uh, and just dip it below and allow the water to overflow into it just as if it were an overflow. And as this progresses you'll see it'll get a little bit more of a hang of this. It probably would have been better for me to hook the camera up onto uh, the gimbal and try it but it was a bit too far away and I couldn't quite get close. I mean, I really am trying here to uh, get in so you can actually see as here it is, uh, the actual surface of the water uh, going down into the container. And then all you need to do in this case, like if you have a uh, few extra bubbles that are you know up against something, just use your finger to move them out of the way, uh, get them more into the center of the tank, and then again of course just uh, dip in and let it go over. This is a really easy way to do it and it is something I actually have done so many times like I actually couldn't really tell you how often I've done this because it is something that's really good for dealing with that kind of thing. Now it is not the only way but what I want to do here before I deal with all the surface tension I'm gonna try again to show you, you know, what to look for. This tank here is the soil one and usually it uh, cooperates really well in demonstrating this, but not today. Uh, I tried it the, other, uh, the day before this and it did really well. Uh, what happens, what you're looking for is, you, like you put fish food on the top, you can see a little bit there near the top of that swirl. You see that swirl that happens? In this particular case with this tank, it would send off little streamers of uh, fish food make, breaking the surface tension and heading off in uh, a new direction and I was trying to get that on camera here and it does show up a little bit better here because you can see the swirling patterns and that is uh, well not just the 
fish food, but also the fish themselves are breaking up that surface tension a little bit. And that's kind of the thing I'm trying to show you here, but again, it's kind of hard to show. Now this is the first tank again, and I've already done a little bit of uh, skimming on it, and I actually went back and did a little bit more. And as you see, as the food goes in, it just sort of fans out. It doesn't do that same swirling pattern. Again, it's not showing up as well as I had hoped, but it is an indicator. If it just sort of spreads out evenly, uh, you don't really have much in the way of surface tension. Now for this particular method here, I did hook up the gimbal, and you can see why I'm not using it for uh, filming, trying to get the film itself. Uh, but I needed two hands for this. The easiest way of doing with, like if you have serious surface tension, take a dry piece of paper towel, drop it flat on the surface, and it will absorb pretty much everything that's there. Uh, it may not get it in one go, and uh, you can either uh, take a new piece of paper towel and do it again, or you can, in this case, because it's uh, those blue shop towels, they're, they're pretty easy to wring out, so I'm going to wring this out and drop it down flat again. And one other thing that you can do, and the one method I actually found that has uh, actually really good merit for this sort of thing, is not just drop it down flat, especially if you have a tank that is a little bit larger or longer or that sort of thing. What you can do instead of just doing this, which is just dropping it down and then scooping it up and then wringing it out. And sometimes what you can do also is uh, you can take that towel and like, rinse it in a bucket of uh, tank water, and that helps as well. Uh, the other way of doing it, the one I found that uh, I tended to do a lot, uh, like I said, if, for clients' tanks that were larger and you actually had some serious surface tension, is I would take that piece of paper towel and I would dip it in at one end, like one end of the tank, let it trail there, and then I would drag that across the surface. So like a third of the paper towel you'll see here in a second is below the surface and I drag it across and then drop it down at the end and then of course do the scoop method and I find that really works well it, it gets rid of as much as uh, well you can hope really and actually the the tub and the, the paper towel methods are probably the two best ways of doing that and as you can see afterwards here it just spreads out nice and evenly again surface tension in general like just the general surface tension like what you've seen here today on these tanks it's not an issue uh, in some cases it's kind of a bit of a benefit because if you're trying to grow uh, plants uh, ones that are a little harder to grow than the ones I'm growing here a little extra surface tension uh, does cut down somewhat in the gas exchange at the surface so you'll have a little bit more carbon dioxide in the tank and that can be a benefit if that is uh, what you're trying to do. Of course, you don't want it to get to any serious point, as in you know, if you're having oil on the surface or a lot of uh, really thick bubbles, because the fish need to breathe, and that's uh, something you have to keep in mind as well. But like I said, a little bit of surface tension, not a problem, and hopefully these methods... Uh, Colin, I think the best one for you would be the paper towel method because uh, it does really absorb, especially stuff like oil and whatnot, and uh, that should work well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and let me know what you think below. And as always, we thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.